curious as they approached. She turned to them all at once and with a smile and a twinkle in her eye, she stretched out her hand to them. And in it, she held a single folded paper crane. They looked in her basket. There were no moon bears or panda bears or goldfish. There were only paper cranes. Why, of course, the crane, he must fly again. They could learn to make the paper cranes and bring them to him for a gift. They ran to their houses and all over town and they began to collect scraps of milk paper and crumbled bags and candy wrappers. They brought it all to the old woman and she showed them how to make folds and turns and soon together they had made five cranes, seven cranes, ten cranes. They put Kazuko in charge of counting and soon they were up to fifty cranes, then seventy-five cranes. Well, she couldn't count past 100, so Shinichi took over, and they worked, and the children began to sing. Shinichi's counting, a few of the elders stopped mid-argument, and they remembered where were the cranes that used to fly overhead each morning. One by one, they came over to join the old woman and the children. Without a word, they reached their hands into the piles of scraps of paper, and they began to fold. Well, soon the elders' fingers were so fast as the children's. Old man Sato and his neighbor joined in. Baker Ito and Mrs. Hayashi, well, even they couldn't argue forever. They were up to 400 cranes, 500 cranes, 600 cranes. There were apologies all around. And the whole village joined with the children. 700 cranes, 800 cranes, 900 cranes, 950. Together, they had made 1,000 paper cranes. And together they began to sing. in one long chain. It reached the length of the village square, and as each child took hold of the chain, the children looked up and the elders looked up, and they all looked up at the odd little rag woman. She threw back her head and laughed. Ha! 
<laughs> and she tossed all the papers up into the air. And as they rang down in the sunshine, without a word spoken, all of those villagers, old and young, friends and neighbors, understood that when they stood together and when they looked upward, away from their now small particular cares, that the peace that they had wished for was not in the flight of the cranes or even in the rope of folded birds. It was in their hearts and it had been there all along. Carrying their paper chain, the villagers made their way to the marsh, to the home of the crane who had given them so much. Their wish then was that this magnificent bird would fly again. Not for them, but for the sheer pleasure of it. They approached the crane, they lifted their chain of folded paper and draped it around his neck. As he lifted his head, a single tear filled his eye, and together, softly, the village began to sing. 